Hello students. So today we have Mr. Tanush Puri with us. Tanush is going to talk about everything with reference to admission to Canadian University. And uh, before we really step into question answer session, I would request Tanush, please introduce yourself to our audience. Uh, hello everyone. I am Tanush Puri from Chandigarh, India. I've just passed out from grade 12 in Commerce Stream and I secured 98.2% and uh, I play basketball, I'm into athletics and I also organize live events and quizzes. Thank you. And Tanush, you can also tell the audience which university you are joining and what course you would be joining. Uh, yeah, so I would be joining Huron at Western University in London, Ontario for the September 2021 intake and I'm planning to major in economics. So Tanush, first of all, please tell our students that why did you choose Canadian universities over US and European universities? So I personally found that Canada was a very welcoming country, especially for international students. The policies are very student friendly. And if we intend to work there after completing our education, we can obtain a work permit very easily. Also, uh, Canada, in Canada, I have a couple of relatives and friends. So basically, there's a support system that is established there. And recently, as per the rankings, Canada was ranked number one in the quality of life. So I would love to explore what kind of lives do people live and how is it different from India. And um, the opportunity level, I feel, has risen more in Canada as compared to the U.S., and I want to explore the different opportunities in Canada. So I chose Canada over US. Right. So you already talked about your chosen area of study. Can you just a little bit in brief tell the students that how it progresses from year after year? Uh, so I chose Huron at Western University. The reason that uh, sort of inclined me towards it was its core structure. For the first year, we are open to take as many courses as possible. And we can try courses from different different fields like science, humanities, commerce. Uh, this was the reason I chose this because I am pretty much not that clear about what I want to pursue, although I have interest in economics. So the first year would lay a foundation for the major or the specialization I want to choose. And in my university, we choose the major or specialization in our second year. So I have time to explore. In the second year, we uh, um, focus on a particular specialization. And if we want to get in a business school, then you apply after your second year. And then the last two years are your prime concentration areas. Right. So Tanush, you, you got into multiple colleges in multiple universities, right? So I'm yes. sure it must be a very leaving the University of Waterloo and choosing, uh, you know, uh, your university Huron must have been a difficult decision. So what were the factors that you considered for making this decision? Um, first, I would like to elaborate on my story. So... As you know that University of Toronto and Waterloo are very highly ranked and many of us want to get into these prestigious colleges. Even I was one of them at the time of application cycle. But once I got the opportunity to interact with the officers or the current students or the alumni, I started feeling that my college, the Huron at Western University, offered something which was different like they had small class sizes of just about our school let's say they have 25 to 30 people in a class as compared to 600 people in university of toronto or waterloo or any top college also the scholarship i got was pretty decent at huron although it was more in the University of Toronto, but somehow I managed to convince my parents and everyone that I want to go there because I know a lot of people. 
and uh, the support system that huron offered was incredible i already know many of the faculty members there the administrators we have got the chance to even interact with the president and uh, they've guided me very well step by step how to go about the scholarship how to go about my degree and eventually i started from a very like you can say i had 32000 dollars scholarship uh, when i initially got the offer and now it has risen to more than twice of that wow. so they guided me very well with respect to the scholarships plus um, they were very flexible they extended deadlines for applications in times of covid so that nobody misses on their chance to apply they also offered very generous financial aid to the deserving students they uh, the covid readiness plan of huron was approved by the government of ontario it was the first university uh, who which declared in december itself that it would open in september and that's what they are doing perfect and yeah right so uh, now you talked about um, the uh, your your choice the factors you considered now we'll talk about the entire process so when you know a lot of students generally ask me when they are in the second year uh, or like in your case when they are in 11th or 12th that how do they start where do they start from so can you give some sort of timeline uh, how to start where to start and how did you manage your 12 studies and secured such excellent percentage along with the application process uh so i would like to answer this question in parts first i'll talk about the timeline so the ideal timeline to apply abroad is september of the previous year you intend to join the university so if you are planning for september 2022 intake you must consider this september as your ideal time to apply and you need to make sure that you complete all your research about the university and scholarships by august so that you have a fair idea of what you want to do and where you want to apply uh, so i was a bit late in applying so i think i am the right person to answer this i missed on one or two opportunities because of this as they had prior deadlines and i applied a little later so the scholarship deadlines are usually early which is a major factor for international students to go abroad they need to have some sort of financial aid so that they can afford themselves and there is no burden on their parents or them to repay the loan so i would suggest that they should complete their research between june and august and apply timely within by september or october right. and uh, then you asked about the managing class 12 along with the application so i would say live in the present just don't make future plans and think that you have exams in that particular month for example if you have a portfolio deadline coming up in the next week and you have an exam after 2 weeks first focus on the portfolio once you finish it then focus on the exams so i would contradict a bit on the long term plan strategy because i never adopted it and short term goals you should definitely set short term goals so that you meet the deadlines and manage both these things tell me one thing now since you uh, talked about the scholarship and you said the scholarship has to be uh, in advance of your application process so uh, what are these scholarships which are available how did you manage to double your scholarship so what are those secrets which you want to bring on table for the benefit of other students <laughs> so basically uh, you can apply for scholarship once you submit the application to the university and uh, some it basically differs from college to college and university to university on the basis of their policies uh, in my case the uh, huron at western university what happened was once i submitted the application the initial offer i got was made along with my scholarship offer the initial offer so i was granted 32000 dollars scholarship at that time and uh, they provided me varied links to the 
college websites where i could explore different things and figure out how i can increase my scholarship so then i made a portfolio of co curricular activities which i took part in and uh, supported by the predicted grades of my school and uh, i submitted it so usually the indians feel that co curricular activities don't hold that value but in my case you can say 40% of my scholarship was based on my co curricular activity so that's a huge amount yeah that's a good insight also uh, that you got okay now uh, coming to our uh, the application process one is the application part that you covered along with application you need to do a lot of other things like qualify certain exams get letter of recommendation so let's talk about that first let's talk about the testing requirements and how did you maneuver along along with your 12 standard studies so since i was also new to these testing systems i gave the ielts which is the international english language testing system the requirement for the ielts band varies from university to university and it is different for the program as well so for instance if you wish to acquire admission in an english language program the requirement would be certainly high than that of a maths course so the usual cut off for every university that is common is 6.5 which i believe is common for most of them and uh, i gave ielts in november 2020 so okay. i yeah so i actually was burdened with pre boards also at that time so i did not have enough time to prepare i just had like a week or so so i attempted as many mock papers as i can uh, we have access to many e resources the british council english prep app is also very good and the basic catch of cracking ielts is improving your vocabulary which you can do either through any apps on your mobile phone or you can simply start reading the newspaper and trust me vocabulary is the key to crack ielts i basic i just had a week and i studied for a week and gave the ielts and cleared it just because of vocabulary perfect and what about sats uh, when did you clear it did you take any coaching sat Uh, first of all there is a misconception that sat is compulsory for canadian universities it is not it depends upon your course and requirement i did not give the sat okay. so i checked the uh, college and its requirement and it said sat optional so i saved on my time so that i could concentrate on class 12 as well because we had to manage both of them simultaneously and i prevented giving the sat or act and utilized that time for building my portfolio and all yeah that's the smart way of doing it very true yeah, you have to prioritize to, yes yes true and coming to letter of recommendations who wrote it for you and uh, i mean how did you manage that and what is actually required in the letter of recommendation so uh, based on my research i found out that letter of recommendations are mostly uh, required in higher amounts at the post graduate level but even at the undergraduate level some colleges require you to submit a letter of recommendation in my case three of my universities the university of toronto york university and huron at western university they said if you want to apply for the scholarship you need to submit a letter of recommendation from any teacher or advisor and i was lucky enough that our school offered an interview where we could also get the principal's letter of recommendation so i managed to clear that interview and i was the only student who got that recommendation so that was pretty helpful in attaining the scholarship that's very nice great so you've been lucky also along with all the hard work that you've done that yeah. you managed to get it from your principal so uh, now tell yeah. me the uh, the importance of the research paper i understand research papers are very important so what did you do and what research uh, did you uh, sort of how did you carry out research in 11th and 12 um 
usually people carry out research at the undergraduate level but since childhood i have been very curious with regard to different things um it was in 2019 that i got the opportunity under a project through each one teach one campaign to educate children and there when i was educating them yeah i taught them english and maths and i noticed a girl so she had difficulty in comprehending things and she was unable to read or write properly i noticed certain patterns which were visible she had confusion with mirror images and she used to write different spellings of the same word so that was pretty like i wanted to explore what is happening so then i realized that she had dyslexia then i uh, approached my mom and said that i want to explore more on this so she helped me the uh, figure out how to do and she said why don't you carry out your own research so i explored ayurveda and how to how does ayurveda cure dyslexia so my research paper uh, it has the title ayurveda a promising therapy for dyslexia wonderful and it got published in the international journal of education and psychological research in september 2020 that's commendable and that is something you know i'm in the field of education this is something very new that i am hearing for the first time ayurveda being used to treat the dis- disability yeah. learning disabilities perfect uh, the huronat Uni- uh, huronat western university offers a program called the scholars electives program it is a limited enrollment capacity program and it allows you to carry your own independent research um, alongside a professor so you report to a professor you carry out the research and you have those stipend benefits and all you get to engage in outdoor experiences so that was something exciting because here i was the one who had to figure out where to go what to do and there i have somebody who will mentor me and guide me on what to do and that program literally accepts 50 applications from all over the world and i managed to clear that so that that's was true. very interesting thank you that's, that's wonderful yes i i just hope and uh, believe that now with new education policy at india we do lay stro- more stress on uh, the research which is missing from our indian education system somehow right tanush the journey had been very exciting for you right and you seem to be uh, really working a lot of uh, effort into making it a success story for you right from your 11th standard i could see i don't know whether it was planned or it was the curiosity which pushed you into research and doing so many other things which you did but i mean over on the whole i see that it's a very holistic way you approached it but nevertheless still there must have been a lot of challenges in the journey so would you want to talk about those so that others can learn from your experience yeah so for i would divide this question into two parts first would be the social challenges which we face like the family pressure and all and second would be the challenges which i actually faced when once i submitted the application to these universities so first i would talk about the universities uh, my first personal challenge that i faced that i applied late so i was unaware about certain policies that they had and it was very it was a very new concept i took time to figure out things and then approach people so on the website also if you look at the website you only find generalized details you don't get the concrete stuff you don't get when to like if something is postponed or if it was pre postponed you don't get that information so you need to approach people i took time to co- realize that the information was less and i need to communicate with the people second problem was so, uh, one minute i I'll, i'll just stop you here so who are these people that you need to approach is it the college officials or is it the students who are studying there can you be little more uh, you know in yeah. detail talk about yeah. detail yeah so mm-hmm. first i approached the international admissions officer south asia miss anjali anand said uh she was very helpful she guided me about the scholarships 
and she also guided me about the programs that we get to offer and she uh, also main the main purpose which i got after having a conversation with her that they have separate departments for separate things and they have a proper contact list so whatever problem i am facing let's say i am having a problem in course selection so i would contact the academics department if i have a problem in let's say scholarships i would contact mr mustafa as the director of international recruitment and our president dr barry craig so i know the names also by heart i am that fond of them and uh, we also uh, get certain um, helpline uh, not helpline certain emails where we can post our queries and doubts so they also reply back by it within 24 hours and uh, we get to sort our problems and i got to meet our international admissions officer in person also okay okay so where where was he based uh, in india itself or uh, you had to go ma'am yeah ma'am ma'am is based in delhi but she travels all over india to greet and you know welcome everyone to huron university that was very warm right. so what are the other challenges tanush yeah so basically the family environment is also a sort of challenge because after a point in time you have to withdraw from the social gatherings or stuff like that but it is often said that great things never come from comfort zones so you have to adapt to that and not everyone's family environment is that friendly and we should welcome challenges and ad- uh, at the same time we should conquer them and my mother was the biggest secret she made sure that i was unaffected by the family environment and i managed to attain what i wanted to and i wish to and even she she was the biggest well wisher right i i i wish and pray everybody gets mom like your mom a very supportive mom who made it uh, you know who who made it a point to send her son to a foreign university i believe it was a lot of hard work that she had put in so uh, definitely one more thing a very specific question i want to ask when did you actually start researching was it in your 11th standard or as you said your mom was doing most of the research for you so how much effort did you put into it i'm sure you would be involved in that and when did you actually start doing that uh, are you talking about my research product or the research, or the research for no 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 the research for admission starting the process of admission it was very late honestly in the 11th standard i had no plans of going out even until the end of 12th standard you can say like 3 4 months prior we were just researching we were not like that they wanted to send me abroad we were just researching so that in future if i plan to go for post graduation or all so i have the opportunity and knowledge to secure admission but then they thought that the deadlines were still open for most of the universities due to due to the covid pandemic so i got the opportunity to apply once i applied and i got the offer i was enthusiastic i started researching about different programs and scholarships but my mom also researched a lot about different scholarships right great tanush is there anything that i have missed on to you want to bring on board here uh my no not actually you've covered everything but i would like to give my last piece of advice uh, firstly as i said that do not make a long term plan for your goals as the environment is dynamic you don't know which opportunity will catch you when you should be prepared and that's life you have to adapt secondly i would say live in the present don't think back to ahead that you miss on your present and for example if i was only involved in the foreign admissions process i may would not have got the scholarship or i may would not have secured that percentage in 12 so you need to balance and communication is the key i would say for foreign admissions you need to contact the admissions officer the alumni the current students you need to be actively involved in everything so that you know because it is something new you aren't familiar with that system 
Thank you so much for your insights. I am sure such candid interview and such honest insights will definitely help a lot of students, Tanush. And for the students, please stay tuned and keep sharing and keep liking the video if you feel it has brought some value to your uh, further plans for higher education abroad. And uh, Tanush, uh, thank you once again. <laughs> thank you. It was my pleasure interacting with you. Name